one more, please. Salient features of the culture is a certain gaiety, a certain pleasantness. There are other parts of the world where things aren't so pleasant and the people walking in the street you see a certain seriousness on their faces, varying from seriousness to depression. Huge, massive populations. Life is hard for them. They're constantly fighting a battle for survival. Young people, old people, men, women, children. Life is very hard for them. We never think about this. There's a difference between our culture and the third world's culture. I'm not talking about Africa, there. There it's extreme. Extreme. Different world. Take the average Chinese person on the street in New York. Tell him, describe to him our life, the life of an average American citizen. You won't believe it. The amenities and the things that we have each home has. Unbelievable. We're talking about fairyland. Baruch Hashem, we live in such a culture. And it's very hard in our culture to become very serious and to discuss very serious matters. People don't want to do it. Take a person and grab them by the throat of his neshama and say, I want to speak to you about what's the most important thing in your life. That's what I'm talking about. Leave me alone. I'm not a philosopher. Leave me alone. I'm talking about it. their ears, their eyes, their minds, they're going to talk about it. <clears throat> but in a mocking tire, in a yeshiva, in a mocking tire, choy somay shavak kodesh baruch hu emes, the rebernish shlolim signet ring, his signet is emes. Moshe Emes, Vesoy Rosso Yemes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Emes. We, that we're sitting in a yeshiva where the whole struggle is with Emes, to come to Emes, the truth, to understand Emes, and to want to absorb Emes. We have to have the courage and the desire to know the Emeslamita, the truth about our lives. No matter how painful it is, no matter how unsettling it is, no matter to what decisions it drives us, we have to hear the Emes of the Torah. We have to have the courage to listen to the Emes of the Torah. speak to that to you. About an ingredient in our being, in the being of every person, 
and what the Torah has to say about that ingredient. And how that ingredient should affect our lives. Part of the Tanakh, one of the Hamish Megillus is Kohelis. Who wrote Kohelis? Shlom HaMalach. Shlom HaMalach has the distinction of having the title of being called the Chocham the wisest of all men. begins with the sentence Divrei Koheles ben David Melech b'Yerushalayim Divrei Koheles ben David These are the words Shloyma Melech doesn't call himself a Shloyma, but he calls himself Koheles Now is not the time to discuss the reason why he doesn't call himself a Shloyma, but it begins Divrei Koheles ben David Melech b'Yerushalayim King in Yerushalayim what is this possible telling us? Divrei Kahelis ben David Melech b'Yerushalayim. The Medrash brings a pasuk. Begins with a pasuk, and that pasuk will give us understanding and insight into what Divrei Kahelis ben David Melech b'Yerushalayim means. Medrash brings a posik in Mishlei. Chazisa ish mohe bim lachtoi with name lachim What does that mean? Chazisa. If you have seen, chizoyon to see. Chaza means to see. Chazisa ish mohe bim you see Ish, a person, Moya, who is quick, the Malachta in his work. In other words, he's diligent. You see a person who has the virtue. He's a very diligent person. Whatever he does, he does with, with force, with decision, with consciousness. He's diligent. Shalom Amalek says in the Pasuk, in Mishnah, he says, Chazisa Ish, Moya, the Malachta. If you see a person who has this virtue of diligence, he's a young person you're looking at. I want you to know if name Melochim is Yatsen. One day he shall stand before kings. A person who has the vir the virtue quality of diligence. We'll soon come to give it a different translation, a different English word. In Chazisa, Ish Mohed Melachton, you come in a room and you're in a society, you see one person who works, whatever he does, he does with an avidity. With Lifting Melachton is Yatsen, we should know in the future this man will stand before kings. He will be very, very successful. Now listen to this story that the Medrash brings to define and explain to us this virtue of diligence. Maise Berabachanina ben Doise. There was a person, his name was Rabbi Hanino ben Doise. He looked around in his city and he saw that the Bnei Iroi 
All the people in his city were bringing up sacrifices in the Torah and the Dodos, were bringing up donations and sacrifices to the Vesel Midrash in Yerushalayim. People were constantly going and taking in those days. It was an agrarian world. They were bringing korbanas to be sacrificed to, to be mocked with them in the Vesel Midrash. Omar, he said to himself, Look, all my friends are bringing, are relating to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the Beis HaMikdash. All my friends are relating to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the Beis HaMikdash. And they're bringing up Nedorim and Nedoves. But me, any male dove, and I don't have a penny. I'm broke, I'm busted. I don't have anything, and I can't bring anything up to the Beis He felt very good. Ma also, what did he do? Ma also. Yotza le midboro shel ira. He went for a walk, and he walked outside of his town. He walked out to the desolate places outside surrounding the town. Le midboro shel ira. And suddenly, the ro shon even achas. He saw a big, huge stone. Big, huge stone. What did he do with this stone? Shavavo, Tzitesa, Mirko. Took a hammer and a chisel, and he polished the stone. First he straightened it out. There's a different terminology. One means taking off the rough edges, then making it smoother, and he polished it. He polished this big, huge stone. He finished his work done. It took him a long time. The honor, and he said, he made a nether, and he said, he made a vow. I take a vow upon myself to bring up this stone. I'm going to give it a donation to the base of Mikdash. Big huge stone, how do you how do you move it? Bikesh this girl and Kayla. He went out to get workers to help him move the stone to Yerushalayim. Nizdamnu loichamisha binayoda. Suddenly met a group of five people. Omar Lahan Maan Liatam Ebn Zul Yerushalayim. Are you interested in working for me? and helping me bring up this stone to Yerushalayim. Amrulai, they said to him, Ten lono chamisha sloyim, but onu ma'alim ma'isim Yerushalayim. Give us five sloyim, we'll charge you five seller, whatever, whatever that is, five bucks, and we'll take the stone up for you, we'll bring it up to Yerushalayim. Bikesh, he said, good, he said, the price was right. He wanted to give them the five slotty. He stuck his hands in his pockets, he scraped around in his pockets. He didn't have the five slotty. He didn't have five slotty. The Rabbani Shalom sent five angels who appeared to him as human beings. Listen to this. He thought maybe they'll be cheaper, they'll get a few pennies. He says, will you help me? Will you take this stone up for me to Yerushalayim? Wait, <coughs> he said, they also asked for five sloyim. And it appears from the matter at this time already, he had the five dollars. So they said, for five dollars, we'll take this stone, the second group of people. We'll take, we'll move this stone to Yerushalayim. But, 
we have a condition. Amulai, Besetem, Bilvad, Shetitin Yotcha, the Edzba Echa in Mon. We'll take up this big, huge stone for you, Shalom, for you for class, Lord. But we have a condition. You see, you have a hand. We want you to take one finger of your hand, Edzba Echa, and help us push the stone with one of your fingers of your hand. You'll help us do that. We'll take the stone to your show. Nothing yodoy the eds go anymore. He gave them his hand with the finger that they wanted. And they began to push the stone and press stone. Within the second. The Nimsa and the Yerushalayim that was standing in Yerushalayim. America. Bikesh Lutnayim Sechara. He wanted to pay these five people. He had a contract, a promise to the five people. The Lord Motzon, they disappeared. They were not here. They couldn't find them, they disappeared. And he could not pay them. He understood that something very strange happened here. Something miraculous, something very, very strange happened. Nichnas Lodish Kesagozis, Vishal Vishvila, he went into the office of the Sanhedrin in the Beis HaMikdash. At that time, he calculated that this, these must have been very special people. So he asked, he asked around, did you know about these kind of people? Finally, they told him, they listened to his story, they saw that he that's an honest person. They told him, young man, a miracle happened with you, and Malachim took and brought your stone to Yerushalayim. And he told them the whole story from the beginning from the time that he felt badly that he could not bring a corn to Yerushalayim, and he told the Sanhedrin that whole story. The Korol of Amikra said, and the Sanhedrin said on this person, they applied the following person, Chazisa Ishmohe b'mlachte l'fmei Malachim Yisyat. The Sanhedrin said, if you, they said the Pesach that we learned before, if you see a person, who is diligent in his ways, he will stand before kings in the Chalachet. And the Sanhedrin said, in this way, in this instance, they read the word Malachim, angels will come. That's the end of the story. You have to understand that I'm not reading you from a fairy tale book. And I'm sure you also understand that I didn't come to tell you about miracles. This is a medrash that was written by Tanoim and Amaroyim, people who were giants, people who were spiritual giants. We have no, no concept into their dimensions. And this is Torah. If you want to get up in the morning and you want to learn this medrash rabba, you're not allowed to learn this medrash rabba until you wash your hands and you make their kasat Torah. This is part of Torah. So we have a right to try and understand what does the Medrash Rabbah say? What is this is Torah for every Jew? What is this Medrash Rabbah saying to us? What, what, how, what relevancy does this story have to our life? We have to learn this, so we learn this, so we walk out. What does it mean? Are we entertained that a miracle happened that a man went and put one finger? And, the, and there he flipped his finger, and there he was. He was in your show. I'm just not the matter. She's telling us that. I tell you, if you traveled from the end of the world just to come and learn this message here today and understand a little bit, then it's worthwhile. We don't know who ourselves. 
We don't know ourselves. When we buy a car, we know more about a car than we know about ourselves. I know very little about a car. I know it's generator. I know it's transmission. I know such thing as fuel change, oil change. I'm not, I've heard phrases. I know more about a car than I know about the secrets of my being. This medrash is telling us about an ingredient that we have. About a phenomenal ingredient that every human being has. That the Rebunshul and Kulit Torahs. An ingredient that is so powerful that it's equivalent to a miracle. And it can rot miracles. That ingredient is called the rot Will. A person has rot Will. We have a force. The Chazawa teaching us what will can occur. Here was a person who had nothing. And a seichel came into his head. He looked around and he saw that people are going to Yerushalayim. They want to become closer to HaKadosh Baruch to the Rebbe They want to go to the base of Middash. They want to relate to the Rebbe So they used to bring Karbonas. You have to understand what Karbonas are. It's a different school. So we should learn it. Maybe we will learn it sometimes in the English. And he felt inspired. I tell I also want to relate to the Rebbe I have nothing. I'm broke. I'm poor. I'm poor in strength. I'm poor in assets and money. I'm poor in intelligence. But I want, I have a will in me. I have a koyach of rotsen in me. Rotsen, desire. I want to relate to the Rebbe He goes and he sees a stone, a huge boulder. The seichel that he's had, he said, I don't have anything. This is a midbar. Everything is free. It doesn't belong to anybody. I can take this stone and make it into a beautiful object. He went with his bare hands, without machinery, with the knowledge that he had. And he worked on it, and he smoothed it out, and chopped it out. He worked perhaps days or weeks or months. And he created something beautiful. This I could give to the base of Mikdash that could sell this. It could have a Kedusha's Dhamman. And the problem came up. How am I going to get a Kedusha? But I want to bring it to you, Shalom, and I want to bring it. Man is not alone. Every time he banged the stone, was an expression of his desire, of his rot. Every minute that I put into cleaning the stone, purifying the stone, everybody should have so. And we have a cloud in the Gemara, a boletaya, misayunoisa. A boletaya, you want to come to Tahara? You want to clear out all the pollution in your life, all the sediment? all the garbage, and you want to come to Emmis. Contact with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To Emmis, to that Emmis, you want to come to it. And he strove, and he strove, and he strove, and he strove. Abba the Gemara says, you come, you want to come to such a good thing with the power of Emmis. And I'll make a miracle. If the wool you work, he sent the five malachim, a bowl of tire, it says, Messiah, I say they help him. The Rabbi creates help. Help that was not there. Don't be frightened of the work miracles. Don't 
don't be frightened of the word. No, it doesn't scare me. Whole nature is a miracle. And there are big secular scientists that know it's a miracle. relationship between a person's rots, between will. The Svarma Kedoshans say the following. The Hebrew word for will is rots, reish, tzaddik, vavimur. With all these same letters, reish, tzaddik, vavimur, if you move the letters around, spell the word tzinar, a pipe, an aqueduct. Singer, a pipe. The, the ingredient of will in a person neshama creates a pipe to which a person who gives him strength. I grew up in Shiva my whole life. I wasn't a bismillah show. I was about your age. You were very, very bright people. I probably was amongst the group that were the low men on the totem pole. And I saw people who took to learning Gemara. And my thought, I'll never make it. What did they huge, huge tell me to come? They had a rest they wanted to learn. They wanted to know the relation of Mr. That rust created at Sina. The Rabbanishal helped them in so many ways. But today they are huge Tamil And the bright, bright guys that got along by using their heads and didn't have to use their will so much, today are not on such a matter, right? We have to go out and dance. Rabbanishal, we say in the morning, you're a kind of Shomash and a Saturday. The bunch of you gave us in the Shona, and in there is the Koyach of Rotz. The society that we live in the making that of us, not even little Putians, not even little people in there, a little piece of garbage. What is the culture offering us? They say it's become garbage, 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 garbage. Last week there was this week. Either last week or this week, there was an article in the New York Times. There was a research committee on the standards in colleges of the teachers and the student body, of their ethical and moral standards of what's doing, of their growth, of their desires. But it was a pity for me. Nothing. Nothing. I don't have to tell you. Nothing. Outside of the base marriage today is a garbage camp. With all due respect to universities, and I do respect them, they are garbage camps. They're making people big, big people. There was a fellow who learned here in the sheep, a medical doctor, he's a surgeon. One of the very few people in the city of New York today that does liver transplants in my side. Hospital. One of the very few, that's the only place in New York that do liver transplants. He was ill, and I was here seven months. It's a whole story to tell you how he learned it, but he learned it in the He was here for seven months. He told me about it. one of the biggest heart surgeons in the city of New York, a young guy. He comes to the hospital blue jeans with patches on a motorcycle. He says he has genius in it. Genius in it. Amazing! He says, outside of that, he's a bum, a trend of the searches, a serious creature. Turn it up to him. Bigger dimensions of making somebody think only the player. Only in the Dalai Lama Shabbat Only in the Miss Mavish. 
This piece of medrash, this piece of Amos tells us a story about a person who had nothing. Nothing but a dream to get near to the Rabbi Shalom. And all the miracles in the world happen. All we have to do is to work and have ruts and desire and desire. And in the end, just with his finger, the miracle. Yeah, all you have ruts. And a wonderful text. Another business in the world, so. a Wonderful rebate. You're in a Kanai. You have to use your rats. Every minute has to be precious. You have to crawl on all fours to come to understand what toil is. The oil at toil. miracle would be that you will expand the dimensions of your being, you'll become big people. Outside, it's less than people. You don't know what's going on in the world of art. You don't know what's going on in the world of music. Decay is not a word for it. Here you're in a place that talks to you and shut it. You get up in the morning and shama shana sat to be. Shama shana sat to be a bunch of shama. He put in us a power package of miraculous koichas. But the work on it. You understand the piece of paper. How to read it properly. How to know the touch of every word. How to know the psha. How to remember it. Be a good idea, we should Xerox the Medrash. We should learn it inside each word. The most beautiful, listen to me. been around almost the whole world. There's nothing as beautiful as a turn of the key. Nothing in the world is beautiful as a child. Call that Goy Kodesh, the Mamlech is Kahana. Live with the Torah we are. The mentions of such a person is an example for the whole world. You could become it's It's what's Has he said he shmoy had been a lot of I had a friend my age. He was not that sort. He was a wealthy man. He was a wealthy boy from a wealthy family. I remember he used to learn in the coil. So he used to come in in the morning. Coil would have to be 9 o'clock at start. He used to come in in the morning. Sit on this chair. Ha! <sighs> Everybody like that. As if somebody was gasping for air. When he opened the place where he's holding in a gemara. Ha! <sighs> he's a fellow that happy to call everything. No, a tall, good-looking, handsome, wealthy, whatever you want, yeah. Happy he was when he opened the door for his head. He learns until today. He's not so. You have to be happy when you toil here. You have to have a little 
strength and it was so snuffish. You have to speak to your rebellion, how to do it, and to do it with strength, and you have to battle. You have to develop your rutsu. You have to watch your rutsu. See a man who is about rutsu with me. If need be, if need be, the Rambam sends angels to help you. 